When you burn fossil fuel, whether it's coal or oil or gas, what is released as they're burned? CO2, that's what's making the temperatures go up worldwide. But at the same time, that combustion also releases particulate pollution that human beings breathe into their lungs. And it is, some people say, the, the single most serious health threat in the world today. In fact, the particulate pollution from burning fossil fuels kills almost 9 million people every year. And we've just grown used to it. We don't react to it the way we should. Again, we need to wake up. But this, these lives can be saved if we stop burning so many fossil fuels. The air pollution particles are damaging to the lungs and to the brains. And we're seeing them in uh, infants and children as well. And the average person in Korea is exposed to more of this fine grain air pollution than in any other country in the OECD. China's worse, they're not in the OECD, uh, but uh, Korea has a challenge here. Uh, the levels in Seoul are the worst in the country, uh, and at the current levels, the average lifespan of a person living in Seoul will be shortened 1.7 years because of this pollution. Is that worth it to keep on burning fossil fuels? We know how to do it. We don't need any new discoveries. We don't need any innovation and deployment. We just have to get serious about implementing these policies. And actually, if we get to net zero, the temperatures on Earth will stop going up. So where does the electricity generation come from in Korea? Well, the largest amount is still from coal, uh, then natural gas, uh, and then nuclear. The phase out of coal has been announced by 2050, but here's the, here's the issue. The announced phase out is excellent, but the policies that are needed to achieve that are not yet in place. So I hope that uh, when all of this is over, you will use your voices to urge more progress there. I remember back uh, 40 years ago uh, uh, when the first cell phones started to come out. We take them for granted now. There's so many young people here. You don't even have landline phones anymore. I grew up with landline phones. I grew up with party lines, actually. Uh, but when the cell phones came out, our biggest telephone company asked uh, one of the big uh, business consultancies, uh, how many of these could we sell 20 years from now? And they came back very excited. Oh, we can sell 900,000 of them. Well, when we reached uh, that year, uh, they were off by 120 times over. Uh, and the reason is the cost dropped fast as the quality improved and the low income nations that had never had the landline networks, they're the ones that adopted the most. The same thing is true for renewable electricity because some of those developing countries, their electricity grids aren't any better than their telephone grids were. This is a national security issue as well. In my country, the Department of Defense has long said, look, this is a national security issue, particularly because of the impact on food and water uh, and diseases, a problem. The climate crisis affects the availability and supply of water in multiple ways, and it increases the demand for water, because for one thing, uh, we see the ice being melted in the glaciers. And you know, uh, the number of people who depend on the regular melt of water from the Himalayan glaciers is very, very large. But up to 80% of all of those glaciers could be melted away in this century unless we reduce the emissions. Uh, people have warned uh, 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 that this is crucial because one quarter of the 8 billion people in the world rely on water from these glaciers. If we let them melt away, where will they get their water? How will we respond? And of course, uh, the rate of ice melt has doubled just in the last uh, quarter, just in the last uh, 20 years. 
And sometimes these glacial, uh, these glaciers melt suddenly, uh, or the glacial lakes uh, that uh, build up behind a, a barrier of ice, when the ice gives way, then you get a sudden outpouring uh, of water from uh, the glacial lakes, uh, from the meltwater. Uh, in Kyrgyzstan, we're watching this uh, glacial collapse and outburst, and uh, they are watching it from quite a distance. I would be getting worried about now. So they ducked behind these rocks and they were covered up, but they were rescued and they survived. But I look at that video and I think to myself, the climate crisis is rushing toward us. We have to wake up and we have to respond. This is another glacial uh, outburst in Alaska. Uh, and it took uh, this house uh, away. Uh, and I talked about how the rising temperatures increase the use of water, the demand for water, not only for people, but also for crops and energy facilities and for uh, manufacturing and industry and for uh, animals. Uh, and water scarcity is already a problem for more than 40% of the people in, in our world. This is in Uruguay. Uruguay has had a persistent drought, and now they are taking the little water they have remaining from the Santa Lucia River and mixing it with seawater. But the people are saying it's too salty. We can't drink it. Uh, so this is the kind of problem that is happening more often. 3.4 3 million people are affected now. Uh, in Uruguay, in South America. The temperatures themselves, combined with the humidity increases, are making more areas of the world literally uninhabitable. Because when temperatures, when, when the combination of heat and humidity reaches too high a level, the body can no longer cool itself off. There are not many areas in the world that have that today, uh, but many parts of the tropics are in danger of reaching that level. Three billion people could be in circumstances where uh, the heat and humidity is unlivable. Long before the temperature and humidity reach unlivable uh, uh, levels, people start to leave. And so we get now migration of climate refugees into other areas of the world. If there are a large number of, uh, of immigrants in a short period of time, that can awaken some of the ugly possibilities uh, in our political systems. Demagoguery, xenophobia, fear and hatred of foreigners. We have seen such controversy with a few million climate migrants. What would happen if we allow a billion climate migrants? There's a poet uh, in the last century, and he wrote a line that uh, has meaning for me. He wrote, after the final no, there comes a yes. And on that yes, the future world depends. There will be a yes. We have to get to that yes. So join those who are using their voices and their votes and their choices in life to fight for the future, for their communities, for their families, and for the future of our world. Use your voice. Use your votes. Use your choices in life. Speak truth to power like your world depends upon it. Because you know what? 
Your world does depend upon it. And always remember that political will is itself a renewable resource. Thank you very much. I look forward to it.